water cooling. What does each fitting do and what is its use? That is what we're gonna cover in today's video. So if you are struggling with the fear of water cooling, I'm gonna help you. My name is Corey and I've been water cooling PCs for the past eight years. And when I say eight years, I mean every single day. And I wanna pass this experience on to you. So if that interests you, consider subscribing and joining our Discord. Our first and most popular fitting is the compression fitting. It comes in various sizes ranging from 12 to 16 millimeters and should be paired with the corresponding tube size. A typical CPU GPU loop will use about eight of these fittings unless you're adding a little extra to the loop, like another radiator, a reservoir, or you're getting a little creative with the water loop. A compression fitting usually has two points of seal. By pushing the tube inside, it is usually hugged by one or multiple O-rings. This is usually not enough to create the seal. The top O-ring is then applied, followed by the collar. As you tighten down the collar, this compresses against the fitting, the O-ring, and the tube, creating that watertight seal. There are variations of the compression fitting, such as this fitting right here. It is the exact same concept as the other compression fitting, however, this time, the walls are removed. This makes it very easy for the user to get their tube length absolutely perfect before they install it as usual. Anyone using soft tubing will have to purchase soft tube compression fittings. There are two parts to this fitting. You got the collar or the ring and the barb. Insert the ring onto the tube and then push the tube onto the barb. Tighten the ring down. The compression between the ring, the barb and the tube is what creates that watertight seal. Our next fitting is the 90 degree fitting. This will be used in conjunction with a compression fitting or already have one built into it. You typically see these fittings being used to run your tubes at right angles off of the hardware instead of straight. They are a lot more compact than a 90 degree tube bend, so it might help out where space is very tight. The tube insert and compression works exactly the same as your normal compression fitting. You can also get these fittings at 45 degree angles and sometimes other angles, but they're not as common. Most systems are built with symmetry in mind, so they're usually vertical or horizontal tube runs. However, if you're feeling very creative, then these might be the fittings for you. If you are the type of person who is too afraid to tube bend 90 degrees yourself, then these 90 degree fittings should help you out. Keep in mind, each extra fitting that you add to your loop is another point of failure. Kind of like how I pronounce that word. This fitting replaces the bends in your tube. All you have to do is insert your tube and tighten down the compression. Just remember, you need to be smart about where you add these. They compromise structural integrity and may not be able to support itself as straight as a normal 90 degree bend. Especially if you start adding multiple on the same tube run. Plug fittings. Each piece of water cooling hardware usually comes with a few of these to plug up any unused ports. It is up to you to identify how many free ports there are on your hardware before filling the system with liquid. We usually have our plug fittings installed up the top of the reservoir, which makes for a real nice, easy filling port. Drain valves are usually found at the lowest point of a system under a large body of liquid. That is usually the reservoir. These fittings are not essential to a system if you know what you're doing. However, for a beginner, I would always recommend getting one of these. Maintenance is always required for a water cooling system at least once a year. Make this part easy for yourself. All you need to do is remove the top plug fitting to allow air into the reservoir. Remove the valve plug at the end and then open the valve. It might also be easier adding a hose to the end to control that liquid a bit. Extension fittings are used to slightly extend the length of a run. You may need an extra 10 or 30 millimeters just to make that clearance, or you've cut your tube a bit too short and you need that extra length to reach the tube. I find myself using these in tight spaces where tubes really isn't an option. These fittings are not essential, but they are very helpful, so it's worth mentioning. The next one's fairly new to the market and it's called the offset fitting. I use these in a few builds where I want a straight tube run, however the ports of two pieces of hardware are slightly out of alignment. A good example might be lining up the ports between a CPU and GPU block. Bulkhead or pass-through fittings require a little more experience, but they're certainly worth the mention. Utilizing these can make for a very clean loop. Using these fittings allow users to have their liquid pass from one side of the panel to the opposite side. I use these in a lot of our show builds and I would certainly not recommend these for a beginner. If you have some crazy angles between two ports, then these snake fittings right here might just be the play. 
These fittings right here have multiple angles to achieve the rotations that you are after. They're usually not needed, however they have come in handy for me multiple times. Of course there are many more fittings out there, multiple, but they're more of a gimmick, really not needed for a loop. That is, unless you're getting creative or artistic. With that being said, I don't think this is a proper fittings video without mentioning our top two gimmicks that companies say is a must have. It really isn't. Now I'll admit, number one, a flow meter, I can see some use for, but you can save yourself $69. Yes, yeah, screw that. These are ridiculous, do not buy them. If you were that lazy that you cannot look over at your reservoir or your CPU block to see if the water is still moving or even keep an eye on your CPU temperatures which can be displayed in programs on the PC and it's even displayed on your motherboard half the time. If you were that lazy, then I don't think water cooling is for you. You know what is even more of a gimmick? These inline filters, do not purchase these. It just adds resistance to your pump so it needs to work harder. If there is a buildup on the mesh, imagine if it completely clogged up. Your loop will build pressure and collapse at its weakest point. You know, whether that's too much heat for the CPU because the water is no longer circulating through the loop or the tube pops out from too much pressure. Now this is worst case scenario and would only happen over a period of time. However, I've seen multiple stories of people's liquid gunking up in a matter of weeks. It was just two days ago that I was contacted by someone who thought these items were essential. Easy cash grab from people who don't know any better and I'm not for that. My goal here is to help people and teach so they're informed when they're going for their purchase. Water cooling is very expensive and can be even more expensive if proper planning and research is not put in place. If I can make that easier for you, that's all I'm after. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you all in the next one.